Hello everyone, it's Monday, it's Mark, it's Mark's Miniature Monday. We've got some figures in front of us that you've, you've painted and we're going to talk about them. Yeah, not only did I paint these, I speed painted these. Speedy painting. And it was using a technique which I'm not all that familiar with. It's one that James directed me in doing. So. Yeah, more of a systematic approach. I'm, I'm pretty systematic, just different to Not James. quite to this <laughs> level. This is like project managed painting. This was project managed painted by my project manager. Yeah. So it, it so. fit, it fit. So Mark spends quite a bit of time on his painting. You tend to like to put a bit more time to projects than I ever would, because if I don't finish a figure within about three hours, I get bored of it and have to move on. Whereas with, I'm barely finished priming a minute after three yeah, hours. So, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So with that in mind, what I thought would be fun is mm -hmm. working out how to fit much of the paintwork on these in with your other projects. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of airbrushing that starts off these figures. A lot of airbrushing, a lot of masking. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And I kind of directed Mark on exactly what to do, mm -hmm. which basically meant that the only real brush work on the figures, there's about an hour on each figure, would you say? An hour on each yeah. miniature. Yeah, it's, it's remarkable. I'm, I'm genuinely astounded at how good these guys <laughs> look, given her. Yeah, they came out well. Yeah. <laughs> this guy wasn't included. We've just put him here because he's cool. He's a cool miniature. And you painted yeah. him inspired by doing these ones. I did. Uh, yeah, actually, during the same time as I was painting these miniatures, uh, I got hold of this robot. It's from Print Minis, who are uh, the company that did 3D printed miniatures. And uh, so, yeah, I got hold of that and thought I'd give it a go as well. Yeah, so he looks great. But then these ones are all from North Star. These are yeah. Stargrave figures. Uh, so, yeah, the real mission was paint mm -hmm. 12 figures in 12 hours. Yep. We ruled out the airbrush time because that was done in between other projects. Mm. So we're going to talk a little bit about yep. how you did it. Mm -hmm. So the first thing was that all of these, except for the metallic ones, mm -hmm. are zenithal primed. Everyone apart from the uh, metallic ones. Yeah. Metallic. So yeah. that's something you do quite often for us for observation yep. posts and stuff. You'll zenithal prime figures so yep. that they photograph well. Yep. For those of you that don't know what zenithal priming is, it's basically start off with a block primer and above uh, target from uh, above, you uh, spray a, a white uh, yeah. on there. It kind of it's a dust in. It draws out the attention. Uh, so the, the, it draws out the uh, the details and, and yes. emphasizes those. And for our purposes, that instantly gives you your highlights. Essentially. Instant highlights. Yeah, yeah. Um, so from that point, it was working out what mark was due to paint over the coming yep. weeks, and I uh, I created a little a little guide a schedule. That, yeah, that step by step took him through. So step one was primer the figures with black. <laughs> step <laughs> Surprisingly. two was yeah. go to a white zenithal on all of them except for the astronaut and the robot dog. So this chapter here. Yeah. yeah. Step three was while you were painting your Persians mm -hmm. to uh, work some purple onto some of the models. Yep. Uh, so you did that on a few of them, right? So do you want to yeah, show so people where that comes in on the... So you can see here on this alien uh, chappy who I absolutely love this miniature. He may not have the cliche classical posing with a gun, uh, although he's got one in his holster there. But yeah, I take it from the bottom with this purple so you can see the uh, the purple kind of uh, glaze going on there. Yeah, So, and you did the same on, on this, this chat. On this guy as well, yeah, you, again you can see the purple from uh, from below. And was there another? And oh, on, and on my, possibly my favorite miniature from this whole range, this weird toad dog. Um, yeah, again you can see the purple there. Yes, yeah. and that was done at the same time as you were doing the purple. Right. Yep, on the Persians. Yeah. So again, with this uh, purple as well. If, if you we did a video on this yeah, before, yeah, we did do a video on this. And I did the same on these. To be fair, I did the zenithal and then uh, applied a purple over that. So it was actually it's an incredibly efficient way of painting this guy and doing the purple shadow on those ones as well. Yep. Excellent. And then you also had another project, which was to paint these red coats. I had to paint these red coats for an up and coming piece that we're going to be working on. Uh, so uh, I did the uh, zenithal again on these, did some uh, masking with blue tack around them, painted the trousers using airbrush and also the red for the for the red coat, yeah. again using an airbrush. And whilst I was doing that red, I painted red on these guys. That is correct. So as you can see, this guy who is not a red skull from no, Marvel, he's not, not red skull from Marvel, um, even though he does remarkably look like red skull from Marvel. <laughs> Um, but again, I applied a, a red using an airbrush on him. Yeah, and we masked off. The, I sort of instructed you which, which bits to mask, which yeah. were the legs, and that means that the zenithal on the legs remained pure. Yep. So that it didn't get affected by the red. Yep. And same with the cyborg guy as well. Yes. You did that one, and you masked almost the entire model there. So right? on this guy, yeah, nearly uh, a good two thirds of the miniature. So the whole 
bottom torso, the legs, and the weapons, and even the head yeah. was all masked. And so people can be quite methodical with their masking, but mm. we just sped it up by just basically blobbing blue tack. Blobbing on. blue tack is perfect yeah. for it. You, you know, I just use a, uh, a cocktail stick to kind of spread it and get into the corners yeah. and to make sure they're masked where you need it to be. And, uh, and so that it's flat at the, at the kind of joining point. One of the worst things if you're using blue tack and, and you don't do that, your color can sometimes yeah. bleed through. So you just need to make sure that that join is uh, it's as it should be. And it's important to make your life easy for yourself. Like this, yeah. obviously, the majority of the figure isn't red, mm. but red was the logical first thing to do because it's yeah. far easier to mask up against the red because the red is the highest point exactly. yeah. than it would be to do it the other way around. Yeah. We'll throw up some photos of the masked figure as well because yeah, we've got those. So. Uh, so yeah, so it was just a case of progressing through that. Yep. Um, we used contrast paints. I say we. we you we, use contrast paints. I used I contrast instructed paints. You. Yeah. Um, if you don't want to use contrast paints and you've got plenty of inks, inks work work as well, especially if you're going through an airbrush. And they're all quite vibrant, so they they make these really intense kind of finished miniatures yeah. as well. So there's not many really muted colours in the contrast paints, or and likewise again with inks that the pigments usually really stand out and tend to be yeah. quite bold. So, okay. And accentuated by the Zenith Primer. And exactly, ex perfect. Uh, the inks and contrast paints work perfect with the Zenith Primer. They really leave the shadow uh, visible that you've uh, that you've been working on so far. So we're on to uh, we're on to the green stage now. You were doing yeah. some terrain that we can't show at the moment because it's for an upcoming Up thing. Upcoming, yeah. Uh, but you did these ones, and you also went back to the alien dog as well. Okay, yeah. So love this miniature. There was purple on this chap as well. There was now that you yeah. mentioned. We we sort of. Skipped over that. No, yeah. you added the purple after, yeah, I think, I on this one. Just you, yeah. Okay. That was your artistic addition. That was my it? one hour yeah, yeah. the brush, was it? <laughs> okay. So, uh, again, this guy, he is the cliche alien with the bionic looking, uh, so uh, the, the biological looking weaponry. And yeah, he was a uh, lovely green, which we, we applied on him over the Xenophil. Uh, you can see here on the, um, the, the pig dog. Um, I'm not quite sure I'm calling it a pig, it's more of a lizard pig, isn't it? Um, it's a bit It's a bit Mandalorian beastie, isn't it's it? It's quite interesting. Yeah. I, lo I love this miniature, I genuinely love this mini, he's great. Uh, but again, from above, I targeted on there with the with the green, and you can see that how the green and the purple work really well in contrast and yeah. stand out on that one. Because of the transparency of the paint. Exactly, yeah. And, uh, and then again, you can see the green on this guy, done over the, uh, the Xenophil base, with zero effort, I had loads of shadow. Yes. Literally took no effort at all. And, uh, and you've got all that shadow effect in there. And then again, finally the same on her. You can yeah. see we masked everything out. We, and then we applied the, uh, the green on there. Yeah, and I mean, we, we didn't mask the gauntlets, did we? Because we knew that they were going to be painted mm, later, but yeah. mask the head off and the legs yeah. just to keep the zenithal yeah. in its original form. And then again, you can see there, this is zero effort. There's no blending done after the event. This is purely zenithal. Um, airbrushed on and then with a contrast paint applied over the top of that yeah and you've got instant shadow and instant blending you know this could would take you days potentially to paint to that level yeah. of blending with a bristle brush and it took me four minutes with airbrush <laughs> I'm, that's not even an exaggeration it probably took me even less than that uh, okay uh, yeah and then the next stage was the yellow because you yes. were uh, painting uh, some hazard stripes yeah we painted some hazard stripes uh, so we got the yellow out whilst uh, doing those that was on him, it was on your dude with the Aliens bionic well, arm, and the a alien guy as well, this one. Ah, uh, excellent, yeah. Um, so with the yellow on this alien, we targeted from above and used a little bit of uh, color theory, uh, as purple is a really great shadow color for yellow. And as you can see on here, it, the, the contrast between the shadows and the highlights there, again, it took mere minutes yeah. to do this. And uh, yeah, really pleased with how this one came out. I think this is potentially one of my favorite miniatures of this group. It shows the technique off well, and essentially mm. once you'd done that, you would have masked off the head and yeah. the, the hands and the feet, and all you needed to do then really was just take off that blue tack, put a few glazes of color over, yeah. and that figure's practically exactly, yeah. finished, there, right? There's a tiny bit of texturing involved in there. You can see around, around the kind of highlights on the head and, and a little bit of uh, highlighting of uh, kind of a off-white on these top parts here. But that is literally, it, it, yeah. honestly, it was so swift to do. Yeah, I highly recommend this approach. It, um, thank you for uh, leading me down this path. Thank it's you. the only way that works for me, you know. I've that, been trying yeah. many different ways to paint, and yeah. they all run into dead ends, but this yeah. one does, does good results. My next Necromonda gun. Yeah. I'm, I am following this approach. Okay. So, yeah, thank That'll you very look much. really good. That. 
Uh, and then, what was next? It so was metallic. Metallic. Yeah. yeah. We decided to paint him using a, is it one of the real color metallic yeah, paints it's from? It's, it's that AK. new one you got, the AK one, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Um, we will find exactly what the name is of that one, and we'll bring it up it's on the screen. It's the same one that you couldn't remember the name of when we did the conflict video as well. So. Yeah, I think it's <laughs> brilliant paint. Through, <laughs> through, an, through airbrush. an airbrush, it is fantastic. Um, the coverage is incredibly smooth. And it looks incredibly close to being a, a true metal. Yeah. Um, so I was really pleased with how these came out. I mean, that uh, one you sprayed the entire figure. The entire figure. Whereas with one yeah. like this, which we've not shown yet, yeah. that one you masked all of the figure except for these metal parts. Yeah, so I'd say 80% of this miniature was masked with blue tack, simply left the arm. Yeah. And the, uh, it looks like a flame flower. I'm going to go with that. Yeah, I believe uh, it and is. And then these shins were also uh, left unmasked. Yeah, same with yeah. this guy. You yeah. masked everything except for the, for the rifle. Rifle. Yeah. And, and just there are various other figures. There was the Robo Dog. The Robo Dog. We need, we need to show this one. Yeah, this one came out really nice. This one looks really, really quite effective. Incredibly simple to paint. It was it was effectively a full silver. As yeah, so they one. both started off the same silver. Yeah. And then we just applied glazes over the top at a later point. But we'll discuss that momentarily. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that was that was it. Other than then you uh, were doing some weathering on the Conflict 47 yeah. figures. And to save time, the fur, applied these the same stuff the to the fur. fur. Yeah, it was a dead simple process. Um, the weathering was just brushed on there. It was a couple of inks from um, Liquitex, which I mixed with a matte medium again from Liquitex. So it was a burnt umber and uh, black ink, I believe it was. Mixed them with some, uh, like I said, with the, with the, the matte medium, and just heavily threw it on. A couple of glazes on there of it. And it's quite an effective fur color, I think. Yeah, um, I'm really well. pleased with that. It's it's gone on there nice and effectively. And, and weathers the guns at the same time. And, it, and weathered the gun at the same time. And it went on really well on this uh, on this dog. I love this chap. I, I think it's. Uh, I love dogs. Yeah. So it was an absolute <laughs> pleasure to get to paint this little dude. I, so, used, I mean, with yeah. this one, you brushed. You actually ended up brushing on the blue because we didn't mask that stuff off. Is that right? Yeah. So yeah. I brushed on the blue there, and and it just shows how you don't always have to airbrush contrast no. paints. You can achieve a very similar result as to what you would have done had you airbrushed, uh, airbrush. But you can do it with a brush as well. Yeah. It just requires multiple coats. Don't buy into the old um, contrast is a one coat. No. If you do that, you will fail with contrast paints. Paint with them in multiple layers, focus on different areas to create a bit of shadow with multiple with, yeah. with an additional layer, and they work beautifully for that. Yeah, but don't buy into Games Workshop's one coat. I, I think it's, they've it's kind of moved on from that a little <laughs> good. bit. I'm, ple I'm pleased then, they have. Uh, yes. Yeah. Um, to get that really good color saturation, you want to apply a, a few layers to build yeah. it up, and you can get them looking nice and bright like yeah. this. Uh, and then it was just down to brushwork, really, brush finishing work. things off. Yeah. Is there anything in particular you want to kind of highlight that you did with the brush? I mean, the dog, obviously. So we've already looked at the dog. I'm going to bring in this weird-looking lizard, pig, dog thing again. <laughs> and it was literally just, I would put a little bit of extra kind of light purple in around this uh, lip line here, just to bring a bit more em emphasis to it and a bit of texture. And same again around the legs. And, and that kind of just make it like a bit extra warty, yeah. a bit more textured, nice and simple. Just picked out those just key areas. Picked out a few Same key with areas. the spines and things, yeah, right? Yeah, the spines, really simple to paint. It was simply using successive lighter layers of, of bone colors. Nothing, nothing onerous, nothing tasking. No. Just really quickly did that. It's um, kind of like this is, this is like the reward at the end of all that hard work doing the spraying on all the figures. Yeah. This is the painting time where you can get your creativity going yeah. and mix and things up. And work with a bit of color theory as well. Yes. And, and again, with this guy, once we'd finished with the, with the uh, red uh, for the airbrush, just brushed on some purple into the shadows to, and some blues just to make it have a bit of extra depth to it there. And again, just a tiny bit of texturing on the shoulders and, and just to draw some attention to, to the head and make it a little bit lighter. Yeah. It was so simple, so straightforward, and I'm genuinely really pleased with how these guys look. Yeah, I mean, this one's this one's my favorite. You love this chat, um, don't you? What I really yeah. like about this one is it, I think it shows off the technique possibly the best because it has mm. so many different colors going on. Like that green mm. was applied over the yellow. It was, yeah. And if you yeah. spin him round, you you've left more there. of the yellow yeah. there. So yeah. it gives this really interesting, quite yeah. impressionistic almost painting approach. And I love an figure. impressionistic approach to painting. Yeah. I'm all about, you know, some artists obsessed with creating that smoothness. I quite like a brush stroke. Yeah, me too. I enjoy, I enjoy seeing what, what the artist was thinking and, and where he wanted to draw attention to when, when they painted uh, a miniature. So yeah, I'm, I really like this mini as well. 
and uh, and it was just another contrast paint over this to create uh, a kind of bronze look yeah. effect over silver. And again, really straightforward. Yeah. There was nothing nothing tasking about that. So I mean, I think the last one to do is talk a bit about <laughs> this the glazes and what what yeah. drew your techniques on here. Uh, so this one, I wanted to just make it look really bold, stand out, look almost uh, kind of punky, I suppose, with the colours I was going for. And, uh, and it was just about using, utilising colours which work together to create some shadows, so purples in the, in the shaded areas, greens in the mid, kind of middle areas, and then yellows towards these topmost, more exposed parts. Uh, yellow is a good, warm colour which when you imagine your light source coming from above, you kind of want yellows yep. at that top part. And then red eyes, because it's a mean dog. Yeah. You know, look at those teeth. So he's got to have red eyes. He's man's worst friend. <laughs> this one. Man's, <laughs> man's best, best friend, man's yeah. Worst. Yeah. So yeah, that was kind of my thinking with the glazes there. But again, really simple, really straightforward to do. I used, again, my favorite medium. So uh, the matte medium from Liquitex to mix with contrast paints and just brushed it in and waited for each layer to dry before it went on with another one. Cool. Excellent. Is there anything else we need to say? I guess one thing is they're not based. They are not based, no. Why is that, Mark? There's Tell a reason us. why they're not based. <laughs> um, that's because at some point next year, uh, we've not pinned a date down for it yet, but we are going to be working on a quite a significant project yes. together, which I'm quite looking yeah. forward to. We're going to do a big Stargrave showcase piece, aren't we? we? Are, yeah. I love making terrain, and this it's going to be massive. It's going to be spectacular, it's and I'm selling it up now because it's, you've I'm oversold it already. It's going to be a huge be disappointment. No, it won't be disappointing. <laughs> but yeah, we've got an idea. We want to do some Stargrave scenarios, yeah. and for that, we're going to build a board. We're actually going to build it bigger than needs be, yep. so that we can use it for other game. And we're going to yeah. do a four by four board, four parts, and it's going to be like a an alien whaling facility or something like that. And all these figures, well, most of them. They're going to sit within little scenes yeah. in the board. I'm really looking forward to creating this atmospheric, like you said, uh, you, the miniatures set within an, within a little scene and having character really yeah. embedded within the board. So I'm looking forward to that. I love those kind of like a massive diorama. Yeah, I suppose, basically, is what we're going it's for. just an excuse for us to get polystyrene foam it all is. over the office yeah. and stuff. Yeah, and inhale as much as possible. Oh yeah, yeah. Safety first, kids. Safety first. Wear a mask. <laughs> So whilst James plays with himself and these miniatures, I'm just going to give you a little bit more information about where you can find the, the, uh, the, full, the full master plan as to how to paint these, which will be in issue uh, 408. And uh, if you enjoyed this video, if you found any of it helpful and insightful, remember to uh, like and subscribe, and that way uh, you'll find more of this wonderful, amazing content included within your uh, alerts. This video has been brought to you by WI Prime, Wargames Illustrated Magazine's online members club. View more videos or find out more about WI Prime by following these links.